All right, so today's time trial was obviously very interesting. Tade Pogacar took the W, uh, which was a pretty huge scenes. Um, not surprising if you know Tade Pogacar. He is one of the best time trialers in the world, but everyone seems to think he's the only climb. But I think now people realize that actually he is one of the best time trialers in the world. Uh, Kung, classic day out, 19 seconds back. Vingegaard, outrageous ride from Jonas Vingegaard. Made a video about him up there. The audio might be questionable, but... Vingegaard is outrageous, obviously, because I made a video on him, he performs at the tour. Uh, Wout Van Aert, Matthew Van Der Poel, all the boys. Um, but the one guy we're going to watch today, we're going to look at his power day here, is Matteo Catania. Finished 8th, 55 seconds back, so you could say, okay, that's, that's quite a big gap, which it is. But I still think it's interesting just to see the pacing strategy, the climb, the climbing, and all the rest of the details. But obviously, what Tade Pogaccia is doing numbers wise probably a bit more but not probably as much more as you think so i made this little segment here so we can see who's the quickest on the time uh obviously pigacha will upload but with no power day so there's no real point waiting for him uh but catania did 413 watts i always think what's interesting actually on this first before we get into catania's data is looking at the different power numbers and how like fast people did so like jonas rooch i think did like 430 so down here somewhere and was like terrible so some people you know do massive watts like he's done 408 like some of these people have done big watts and not done very well obviously weight is an important issue like sepkus is tiny but you can still see that if he did 413 catania and like you know that's not much more than what dorian got on did he finished here or like you know jonas rickart did 425 watts so you can see that actually cda your drag is really important so we'll go over to the big boy ride here so th average speed 49 kilometers an hour almost which is pretty rapid so his weight 70 kilos normal is 420 so basically six watts per kilo for that half an hour which again is like obviously very good I'm not getting around that but it's not like nuclear i guess in a time trial position it is, pr is it's pretty solid uh but you can see here so it's a relatively hilly course nothing too crazy uh but nothing flat either so straight out the gate's gone to a climb just ridden at seven watts per kilo and that seemed to be pretty much the what his goal was about seven to eight watts per kilo on the climbs this is a slightly less steep climb so 6.6 .6 watts per kilo 39 k up four percent very very quick this rolling section here again um you know you obviously go hard on the climb etc etc but normalized 407 so most people said you want to sort of go out quite hard so i think he he um if we go down here on strava source we can look at the peak normalized peak 20 minute is going to be yeah the first 20 minutes here which i guess makes sense it's the most hilly because after here after from what 16 kilometers onwards down it's actually pretty quick time trial um so this bit here is really when he was pushing hard um making sure that on all the climbs he was going hard and then from this point onwards he actually sort of backs off a little bit normalized 406 but you know this is downhill minus six percent 53k an hour like you could go harder there you might go 53.5 but gain do an extra 30 watts which obviously isn't isn't the one and then the finish to the line is actually quite um well it's a decent climb 1.2k at three percent but you can see here it's a lot of t um, twists and uh, turns and then the bit to the very final line again is it goes up to 900 watts wax out pretty decent numbers here 800 watts towards the end but it's pretty interesting to see how Catania did it so you can see overall like 420 normalized which is obviously very good but it's again it's not actually beyond the realms of possibility of like decent people who can ride a bike um doing six watts per kilo for half an hour in a tt position obviously it's mid tour de france which is really incredible but i think the main thing it goes to show is that optimization of equipment is one of the biggest things and that is the biggest difference between people like van avermaet maybe or maybe that's wrong but jonas rickard doing 425 watts danny van Poppel doing 400 watts and like all these people and then him doing 413 which is obviously is very 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 strong no doubt about it but you know, Degen did 4.12 when he was like 45 seconds quicker and that will be equipment choices and that's the important thing. And obviously when I say equipment choices, I mean position because that's obviously the largest thing. Having, being able to get like hold the TT position like that forever is very important and also being able to just do your power in that position. So that is one of the other important things. It's the same with Lutschenko, big, big numbers from him. Um, but like Luke Durbridge did 430 watts here, but he is always a bigger guy, so always has to do some more watts. But Richard Carapaz up here, I'll go through that ride actually. It's interesting to see what GZ contenders do, but 370 watts for him. 
I mean, this is the thing, like if we look at the watts per kilo on this, it will be like 6.1, which is like pretty strong. Um, and like he's doing big numbers again, but like just the pure, doesn't have the pure fire, the gas. Like if we look at this sort of last bit here, I reckon this part, he was going what, like 4K an hour slower than what uh, Catania was doing. While the first probably 16K is probably actually going pretty hard. And up, like up these climbs, he will be going similar speeds. Um, so yeah, interested to see how Caravaz has done. Not a good ride from him necessarily, but uh, solid ride from Catania, and that's sort of the numbers you need. In terms of bridging the gap, so if we if we looked at um, this again, 19 seconds, there are a couple things I saw. Maybe he could have bridged the gap. So tires, I believe uh, Kung is on Conti's, and uh, Pagatra will be on coarser speeds. Coarser speeds are a lot faster than like the Conti tubular tires. Um, obviously, they haven't been tested on the bicycle roller resistance, but everyone knows Conti's um, coarser speeds are the fastest. So that's a little bit there. I don't know how many watts that is, but it, it's probably a couple. And then chain ring. If you looked at uh, Pagatra, he was running a one by. That again, some people say is like five watts. Five watts is that 19 seconds over half an hour. Maybe it could be. Probably not exactly. But I think those were the two things I saw. And the rest of it, I don't really know. It's all personal, like skin suit and stuff, like and helmet. Obviously, they have no choice in their helmet because they're pros. But that, you know, could be a big factor. Like if Kung could use a better helmet, but maybe the arrow heads really quick. I don't know. But anyway, uh, that's enough speculating. But I think there probably could be maybe 19 seconds bound in some of his equipment. He did also have a tri spoke, which I always think is questionable. Is just a deeper like C60 or whatever equivalent of wheel that they can use. Is that not quicker? But maybe not. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you in the next one.